right, welcome to Teachers Talking Teaching. This is Tracy Guile, and I'm here with another Tracy. And I'm Tracy Bean, and we are so excited today to have our very first guest on our podcast. And we are here today with Natalie Jacobson, who is a behavior specialist. So Natalie, welcome to our show. So thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so we um, want to start with like your origin story. How did you get into education and how did you get started in this field we call teaching? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I actually started um, as a para at Irish Elementary um, a long time ago. <laughs> so um, back in the like le- late 90s. Um, and I was a parent in an SED program, um, which is, you know, serious emotional mm-hmm. disability um, program. And I did that for a couple of years. My um, After my first year, I was like, this is for me, mm-hmm. and went and got my master's while I, you know, continued to be a para. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, from there, I taught special education mm-hmm. um, in a couple of different places, and and um, one of the places that I taught was in Alaska, and in Alaska, that it's non-categorical special education, so you wear all the hats and do all the things <laughs> because of the resources, and then um we lived in North Carolina for 10 years, and that's where I really dug into um, the behavior side of, of the work in terms of like being um, somebody who goes into other people's classrooms and um, and helps think about behavior. So I did that in North Carolina and worked in an alternative um, setting that's kind of like a public separate setting for kids with very, very serious um, behavioral issues and, and then moved back to my hometown and that's came back to work where I started and (laughs) um, I've been an MTSS facilitator and um, I was part of the professional learning team but I'm back where I'm meant to be like in my jam position coaching people on behavior so so we both have had the pleasure of having you work with students in our schools and in our classrooms and just are so impressed with your skill and your expertise and working with children and their behavior. So one of the things that we always have appreciated about you is you are just always looking for new ways to help students. So what's something that you're working on or that you're exploring to help students that you're currently coaching and teachers that you're currently coaching? Yeah. Um, so I'm super excited to be when I, um, a part of like the first big cohort for um, the neurosequential model in education training um, around trauma. Mm-hmm. So um, Dr. Bruce Perry, who wrote like The Explosive Child and um, The Boy Who Was Raised as a Dog, Born for Love, mm-hmm. um, all kinds of amazing books, What Happened to You with Oprah. Mm-hmm. Um, he is one of the foremost um, clinical researchers on on childhood trauma and, and how it affects um, children's brains and their behavior. Um, so we have a cohort, we have a group of folks um, in the district who are being trained um, within his, you know, his model. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I get to be a part of that. And I'm super, super excited about it. It's, um, it's, it's a lot of work, um, but it's so worth it. And I'm learning so many things about, um, you know, children's brains and um, their development and how trauma impacts, mm-hmm. um, how trauma impacts that. Mm-hmm. Can you just give us in a little bit of a, a nutshell summary? What is that? What is the neurosequential model? So, basically, um, <laughs> the neurosequential model is um, it's based on research. Dr. Perry has been researching um, the effects of of childhood trauma since like the eighties. That I want to say, like even the late seventies, early eighties, mm-hmm. um, and. What it is is um, taking the what we know about brain development, neuroscience, right? Which is that um, all development in in our brains occurs from bottom 
to top and back to front. So I I like to use when I talk about the brain, I like to use Dan Siegel's handy ha 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 model of the brain because it's the hand, right? Mm -hmm. So when you use that model, this is like the brain stem, which is the old, the lizard brain, right? And then um, the limbic system, which is the emotional part of the brain. You also have midbrain in there. That's part of like the neurosequential model, mm -hmm. but um, and then the amygdala, which is the alarm center for the brain. So it it scans the environment looking for you know threats using our mm -hmm. senses, right? And then that triggers fight, flight, or freeze, which is in the brainstem. And then finally, we have like the cortex, which is what we think of when we think of pre mm -hmm. the frontal lobes, the neocortex, the prefrontal cortex. That's where all thinking um, and logical processes and um, language and, and um, language um, development and, um, and interpretation, like understanding mm -hmm. the words that are coming out of other people's faces all lives right there, right? And then formulating responses. So basically, Dr. Perry's model um, takes what we know about that development because it all starts here, right? Mm -hmm. This is the oldest part. And and then as our brains develop both in utero and then, you know, well into, you know, adulthood, um, <laughs> it it happens sequentially, which is mm -hmm. where that mm -hmm. <laughs> word mm -hmm. comes from um, in the title. Um, and it has to follow a certain a certain like kind of pattern mm -hmm. um, as we develop. And if trauma occurs at any point, mm -hmm. um, and it can be acute trauma, meaning like you know something something huge and traumatic happens in your life, or you know neglect is ongoing trauma or, um, you know, chaos within the family system or living arrangements or um, food insecurity, poverty, things like that are ongoing trauma. And that affects um, that actual physical development of, of the child's brain, mm -hmm. of the person's brain. Mm -hmm. And the repercussions from that um, are, are really quite far reaching um, in terms of like, you know, how we relate, um, how we learn, mm -hmm. how we behave, um, and and it also has far-reaching impacts on our on our like physical health. Um, mm -hmm. Dr. Nadine Burke Harris is is kind of one of my heroes, and mm -hmm. she's another pioneer in that area. Um, highly recommend her TED Talk mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it, or multiple TED Talks. Mm -hmm. um, so so yeah, what happens then is kids will end up with actual physical changes to their brains um, and it makes it difficult for them to access the thinking and learning and language mm -hmm. parts of their brains. Mm -hmm. um, and the Bruce Perry's model um, helps us identify where those um, where those areas are that they need improvement and also where their strengths are, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and give some very specific um, methods of intervening um, that are, you know, again, um, evidence-based years of research mm -hmm. around what, what we can do to help kids mediate what that trauma, the impact of that trauma on their on their brains. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I have valued the most about you is when we're working through issues with a lot of those kids, you have very concrete strategies mm. you've been able to give me as a classroom teacher mm -hmm. to go implement like literally the next day, or sometimes we've met right before school and <laughs> I've been able to implement it that day. <laughs> um, and so those are the kind of things too, that I think a lot of teachers are yearning for. Mm. So can you share some of those um, ideas that have come from your experience with learning about trauma that also apply to virtually any kid struggling in the classroom. Absolutely. Um, so I would say like I, I do have one favorite intervention that I often recommend that really doesn't have anything to do with with trauma, but it doesn't hurt. No trauma required. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, uh, my favorite is what's called the two by 10 intervention, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is um, two minutes a day 
um, over the course of 10 days where you sit down with a student or stand up and walk even better mm -hmm. um, with a student and talk about whatever it is that they want to talk about um, that doesn't have anything to do with, you know, grades or schoolwork mm -hmm. or um, behavior or discipline or anything like that. Um, to make a connection with them um, because one of the one of the ways that um, we can very quickly and easily intervene with kids who are struggling in the classroom is to form a very close bond mm -hmm. with them and when they are when they're bonded with you when they know that they care that you care about them as a person um, you will see just dramatic improvement across the board. Now, I will give the caveat that like some of the toughest kids require multiple rounds of the two by 10, <laughs> right? So you might look at something that's closer to like, you know, four by 20 or <laughs> more than that. But, um, yeah. but um, it it's one of my favorites because it requires like almost no planning. You just have to find a two minute chunk in, in your day. Um, you don't have to have any special materials or visual supports mm -hmm. or, you know, um, curriculum or anything like that. And that's one of my favorites. I have to agree because mm -hmm. you shared that with me earlier this mm -hmm. year and it has made a huge difference in a couple of my students' lives this year and in my life. Like, cause we talk that mm -hmm. relationships are mm -hmm. like key to be an effective teacher. Mm -hmm. And it allowed me to establish a great relationship with a couple students at the beginning of the year that then I always like to equate it to like filling the bucket mm -hmm. and filling their buckets. So later when I need to make a withdrawal mm -hmm. <laughs> and discipline them or get on them for something later in the day, um, they've resp their response to that has been so much more positive yeah mm -hmm. because they know it that my discipline of them is coming from a place of love and yes. caring as opposed to me just like constantly harping yeah. Yeah, on them if, so if you yeah. try to make a withdrawal and there's no relational capital in the bank like you're gonna overdraft and that's never good so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and we've used it in our building with different people mm -hmm. too it doesn't have For to sure. be the classroom teacher oh yes but to give the kid a connection to mm -hmm. somebody right. in your building somebody mm -hmm. outside of their home unit mm -hmm. that um, they feel like cares about them. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, that's key for teachers to hear too, that sometimes you're like, oh, I have 10 kids I need to do it two by 10. Yeah. <laughs> and let me reach out to the mm -hmm. other people yeah. for resources. Well, and my other favorite intervention is Tums, which um, is, I always attribute it to Dr. Laura Riffle, um, the behavior doctor. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know if it's originally hers or not. So it's um, touch, use their name, um, make eye contact and smile. Mm -hmm. It's basically meeting meeting kids at the door um, and checking, like at following mm -hmm. transitions, right? Mm -hmm. But especially as they come in, um, making sure that you're doing some manner of mm -hmm. of those things of of the tums, mm -hmm. like and whatever whatever they're comfortable with, like high five, hug, handshake. I had a kid that we would do a toe touch because mm -hmm. that was as close as he mm -hmm. wanted to get. Um, but that intervention is actually like it has excellent research behind it mm -hmm. um, in terms of like increasing on task behavior um, by I I want to say it increases on task behavior by like. 20%, 19 or 20%. There's an Edge of Jehovah article on it, but I mean, it's solid. Yeah. The research is yeah. solid and it's a really easy one, right? Yeah. Again, I'm a big no fan of preparation. Mm -mm. Of no planning, no, no extra yeah. time, mm -hmm. really. You know, yeah. yeah. So quick and easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thinking about that connection, I had just read an article about um, a school that asked teachers to write every single kid's name on a sticky note mm -hmm. and then to see what they knew about each child. Mm -hmm. So one or two things that they could name about each child. Mm -hmm. And then they looked at all of the sticky notes where they didn't know anything mm -hmm. about a particular child mm -hmm. and tried, so then very intentionally use the two by 10 strategy to get to know mm -hmm. the kids who they really didn't know anything about just as a, another method of building that connection and, and really establishing relationships for kids that everyone deserves to have a strong relationship at school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, 
if for no other reason, right? We all get into teaching, I think, because we have we have a heart for kids, you know, and we we want you know we want the best for kids, and we want to you know be helpful. But if for no other reason, it's going to make your life way easier as a teacher too. <laughs> so it really is. Um, yeah. So those are those are my two favorites. And then if I can make a plug for like you know some um, some Bruce Perry type interventions again like no trauma required anything that you can do that is rhythmic and rep- um, repetitive um, is very very um, calming to the central nervous system is very organizing to the central nervous system and so like having kids do like a, a rhythmic chant um, or do some like you know brain breaks that involve like dancing or you know just like rhythmic even rhythmic clapping like kind of what what we do like um in music classrooms and stuff like that where you know you might do like a little mm-hmm. bit of that um mm-hmm. that can be incredibly powerful and pretty easy and if you build it into your day a few times a day like that is very organizing for kids it's really very helpful mm-hmm. so I know another thing you shared with me that was really powerful that is connected to that was your, I've started calling it the Mm 60-60, but I found um, the Spotify channel that has a bunch of classical music with Mm -hmm. 60 beats per minute, Mm -hmm. and we do that for 60 seconds after lunch, just to kind of you know, mm-hmm. regulate them again. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's such a simple thing mm-hmm. just to kind of bring them back to yes. that center. And I, I, again, I'm guessing it comes back to that because our brains like that pattern. Mm-hmm. of. So, so when we're, when, when our lizard brain, when our brainstem is developing in utero, that first experience with rhythm or with rhythm is um, the heartbeat right Mm -hmm. the maternal heartbeat and so um and which hovers right around 60 beats per minute for for most people um so um that um implementation of of using um 60 beat per minute music um especially following transitions Mm because those are tricky and it's so good for the teacher to do it um, yeah. alongside yeah. the students because it's regulating for everyone, right? Mm-hmm. And you have to be a regulated adult if you're going to help regulate dysregulated mm-hmm. children. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, there's a school that, I'm, that I've been working in um, where they've done that. They've implemented that school-wide three times a day. Mm-hmm. And it's making a huge difference. I keep joking too. I'm trying to teach them classical music and yeah. um, actually, you know, request songs now like Hall of the Mountain King, Mrs. Yes. Bean, can you please listen to that one today? <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Our classical education. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, one of the things that we talked about on our last podcast was the, the pandemic and, mm-hmm. you know, what um, things that we learned about teaching through the pandemic. And I know there's been been so much out there about how the pandemic affected children and their mental health. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things um, I'm particularly interested in knowing your strategies for is that peer relationships that we've seen mm-hmm. kids struggle a little bit more with their peer relationships and just mm-hmm. generally getting along with one another, negotiating typical things that maybe pre-pandemic wouldn't have been a, a an issue, but now seem to be an issue. So yeah. are you seeing that? And do you have some ideas about how to help students with that? I'm definitely seeing that. Um, and I can say like categorically in terms of like, like I only have qualitative research mm-hmm. around this, you guys, <laughs> but um, like from, from what I'm seeing and my colleagues are seeing and then my colleagues in other states, like my behavior peeps in mm-hmm. other states, mm-hmm. you know, are, are also saying like, yes, mm-hmm. we're seeing this. This is the hardest school year, harder even mm-hmm. than last year. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, in terms of like kids with peer relations, I think um, the more structure you can add to um, those interactions initially, especially for kids who are really, really struggling with it, like they need they need modeling and role playing and very direct teaching around Mm -hmm. um you know this is you know it means to be kind yes (laughs) (laughs) you know (laughs) and if you're frustrated here are the Mm -hmm. things you can do and let's practice that and Mm -hmm. you know um because 
um, it, it's just like teaching academics, right? Mm-hmm. We have to tap into multiple modalities when we're teaching and reteaching. We have to remember that, like, you know, um, the as humans, we need at least 27 or about, you know, between 27, 30 opportunities for positive practice. That means getting it right, right? Mm-hmm. Before we start to approach automaticity, mm-hmm. before it starts to become something that we just do automatically, you know? Um, So kids who are struggling with those um, peer relationships and negotiating those social spaces, Mm -hmm. um, they they need a lot of repetition Mm -hmm. um, and practicing it. And Mm -hmm. it's always better to have that kind of be a structured thing for them so that Mm -hmm. they can you know, until they're starting to access it more automatically, they they have the opportunity to practice it with, you know, with a lot of support. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once they start to feel more comfortable and you start to see them start to get it, just like with like, you know, math. math. <laughs> yeah. Where you're like, okay, I think mm-hmm. I can, you know, I think I can back it up a little bit. Behavioral learning is the same, the same way. Um, I, I also think that... Um, Uh, The pandemic has really brought those things to the forefront and been um, something that, you know, we've seen more because they've just missed out on a lot of Mm -hmm. like in-person social interaction. Mm -hmm. Also, they're missing like a whole bunch of or have been missing a whole bunch of social information, communicative information from people's faces, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, So I think as they adjust to our new normal, um, I think we're going to start to see things kind of level off, Mm -hmm. right? Um, But you know, it, it's also like any any sort of uncertainty, mm-hmm. right? Anytime we see like a new variant appear or like mandates change or mm-hmm. um, the way that we're going about business as usual and schools shifts, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we can expect that it's – behaviorally and socially is going to be kind of hard for them. Mm -hmm. It's like my favorite meme. I know you guys do top tweets, but like (laughs) I do have a favorite meme that's um, things that make kids lose their cool. And it's it's just a (laughs) list of all the things from, you know, from like, Groundhog's Day and three day uh-huh. weekends, uh, all the moon, way moon, to yes. full moon. Yeah. Yes, Time all change, mm-hmm. <laughs> all <laughs> the things, change in barometric pressure. Uh, you name it. Right? Like, yeah. And part of the reason for that is, you know, their little brains are still mm-hmm. developing, and mm-hmm. you know that's how we've evolved to respond to keep our ourselves safe. Yeah. You know, when when something unexpected or or mm-hmm. outside of the norm occurs. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, everything, yeah. everything, yeah. all the things my all kids the lose things. their cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I know I started doing class meetings on Fridays and I mm-hmm. read somewhere, I don't, I, I don't come up with any original ideas. I'm a great thief in education. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started doing AAA meetings, mm-hmm. which we all know has a little bit of another meaning in the adult mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. But on Fridays, we have our AAA meetings and it's apology, appreciations and ahas. Mm-hmm. And the kids have actually, I wasn't sure when I tried it out this year, um, they're allowed just to you know, raise their hands, share. Do you have an appreciation, mm-hmm. an apology, mm-hmm. or an aha from the week? And I am amazed how many of them, as we've gotten more comfortable with each other, will share an apology. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm trying to embrace that idea that it that when you mess up, because we are messing up a lot this year, because we've forgotten how to interact yeah. appropriately. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, that we we just need to embrace it and apologize, and mm-hmm. and it's okay. So mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. been a powerful change All in right. my classroom that I've tried to do to yeah. fix the same mm-hmm. problem. As you were talking about looking for models and practice and opportunities, you know, 27 to 30 times, like one of the things that I appreciate about like meetings or circles or restorative practices Mm -hmm. is there's oftentimes a lot of great modeling of what it looks like Mm -hmm. to apologize, what kindness and appreciation looks like. Mm -hmm. And so bringing that into the classroom just as another model of what what it looks and sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And anytime you can model that as an adult, it's mm-hmm. so powerful mm-hmm. for kids to see as well, you know, that I 
you know, I screwed up, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, because none of us are perfect. So, right. you know, and that's, and that skill is, is a really like powerful skill for, mm-hmm. for kids to see grown ups mm-hmm. model. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great safety. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Well, Natalie, thank you for being with us Mm -hmm. today. We would love to have you come back again Mm -hmm. at the further you get along in this process of your learning and come share even Mm -hmm. more strategies with us. So thank you. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. You're so welcome. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. I'm very flattered. (laughs) (laughs) We appreciate your expertise. As I said when we started, you've helped kids in my school. You've helped kids Mm -hmm. in Tracy's school. You've helped me. Yeah. We we feel like you're a great coach for kids and adults alike. So thank you for being here. Thank you. We appreciate that. So Natalie, on our Teachers Talking Teaching podcast, we like to talk about how our week was by using a scale that we've come up with called the Chocolate Barometer. And it's based on um, the school's chocolate drawer and how much chocolate a teacher consumes during the week that we would judge how difficult the the week has been for for the overall school as well as different staff. So how was your week on the Chocolate Barometer? The scale is a one to 10, with 10 being a really difficult week and one being an easy or week. Um, I, so I have to say, I love the chocolate barometer because (laughs) chocolate is a big part of what I do. Um, (laughs) because I learned a long time ago that if I brought chocolate along with me, Mm -hmm. um, when I was talking to teachers and admin and teams about kids with very severe behavior, Mm -hmm. that it was helpful to have my own supply of chocolate, (laughs) um, for them. So I usually travel with chocolate. And I'm kicking myself for not bringing the chocolate bucket <laughs> with me. But um, I would say uh, this week was at about like a four, like, um, and not for any great reasons, just lots of kids mm-hmm. who were out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, my colleague and I, um, a lot of times will say the behavior gods have smiled. Um, and, and this week, a lot of the kids that I was going to see and work with were, were out. Mm-hmm. So I had the opportunity to like catch up on some paperwork. And so, which is not my favorite anyway. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'd rather be in the schools working with mm-hmm. the kids, but it was a lot less stressful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, about, how about you, Tracy Bean? What was your week? Oh, gosh. Um, Mine was probably more like a five. Pretty normal. Mm -hmm. Fairly average week. We uh, had special assembly on Friday, which on the list of things that sets kids off, that goes on there too. Absolutely. Um, So, you know, (laughs) recovering from that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, I feel like we um, haven't, I haven't had my whole class together very much since Uh October. And I think we've actually had a couple weeks here where I've only had maybe one kid gone during the day. So Uh, things are starting to feel maybe Mm -hmm. a little more back to normal. So yeah. How about yours, Tracy? Yeah, I would say I was probably in the three or four range. Um, Not, not as stressful of a week as some of the previous weeks have been. And um, schools were doing fun things for two twenty two twenty two this week. Mm -hmm. So two twos and, oh, it's just, you know, lots of ways of, you know, bringing connection through those spirit days, Mm -hmm. particularly this week, it was two twenty two twenty two. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Just a lot of joy. Yeah. So how about your top tweet of the week? So I'm going to piggyback on your 2-22-22. I threw out my math plan on Tuesday over last weekend. I took a minute to think about the fact that this was a momentous day. Mm-hmm. Like, that is, this isn't going to happen again for a long time. Um, and so we did a challenge where the kids are were at vertical whiteboards mm-hmm. working on trying to find all of the, using five twos, they tried to find every solution they could for zero through 22. So how can you use five twos to get to zero? How do you use five twos to get to 22? Um, and um, so that was great. We also are doing a unit on order of operations coming mm-hmm. up. So it kind of allowed me to actually, I, it's not that I threw out my math standards. I still talk yeah. to math standards. Mm-hmm. I just thought it through a much more creative way. And we were successful. We got every, they got every number but 17 as a, as a class, mm-hmm. most groups got multiple solutions for different ones too. So that was a fun, I tweeted out about that because mm-hmm. I thought that was a fun thing to do. They did also happen to notice and we looked at the clock because we have new digital clocks in our classroom, um, that it was 2.22 in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. 
And we stopped and we had to cheer for a whole <laughs> minute and just celebrate the fact. I mean, yeah, what a cool thing, you know, even right. the kids pointed out this is only going to happen mm-hmm. once in our lifetimes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was that was kind of a fun day on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, how about your top tweet of the week? So um, I visited a school this week and got to observe their virtual assembly, which we're still trying to keep, you know, distancing between kids and not put them all into a a whole room assembly. But their virtual assembly just had a lot of uh, celebrations and awards. My favorite award was the um, custodians award for the the class that had the cleanest classroom. Mm -hmm. It was um, like a vinyl glove that was painted gold and attached to a stand. And I think it was filled with sand. And it was in the shape of a wolf, which was the school's um, mascot. Ah, so creative. it was very creative. And, you know, those particularly handmade awards. Another one was um, the PE award for a class that had been doing really well in um, PE. And the PE teacher talked about how they were learning to work together more and to gain mm-hmm. some sportsmanship mm-hmm. and teamwork skills. And so the, the PE award was another handmade award. And it just... It, it was really fun because it was a virtual assembly, but when the awards were given, you could hear the school <laughs> cheer, like all um, around, you know, this just eruption of cheer for, oh, okay. you know, celebration for either kids or for classrooms getting awards. So mm-hmm. it's really fun. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Bringing people together, but virtually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Do you have a tweet of the week? I don't have a tweet of the week, but I got to experience Tuesday um, (laughs) at a school where everybody, I mean, like all of the staff were in tutus. Mm. It was tutus, tiara, tie-dye, and it was amazing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was so cute. It was the cutest thing. I was like, you guys have pictures yeah. mm-hmm. um because this is adorable and then i i got to be a part of an awards like a virtual awards mm-hmm. assembly too and it's so it, it's the cutest thing mm-hmm. and then also in the individual second grade classroom that i was in the teacher they have like a set of cheers that the kids uh-huh. getting the award can oh, can fine. ask the teachers mm-hmm. to do mm-hmm. and it was adorable. It was, mm-hmm. it was the cutest thing ever. So <laughs> I, yeah. I love those like kind mm-hmm. of cute special cheers. The one I always remember is taking a cheese grater, like one of those old fashioned cheese uh-huh. graters and saying, you're great, great, great. <laughs> that was one of the cheers. That's, awesome. so that's one I always remember. This teacher mm-hmm. was singing Katy Perry, but her name is Carrie. So she was doing the fireworks song, so they would say Carrie Perry and point to to the teacher, and the teacher got her mom. Yeah, it was awesome. It was very curious. Love that. Yeah, (laughs) just a week of connections and joy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Natalie, for being with us and being with us on Teachers Talking Teaching. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you for joining us on Teachers Talking Teaching. If you've liked what you heard today, please like or subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can now find us on your favorite podcasting app and listen to us as well. We hope to see you in the coming weeks.